Hey, what's going on guys? Steve here. Just learned something interesting today. The FDA just made ketamine legal to treat treatment-resistant depression. Now, it's not exactly ketamine, aka Special K or K, a commonly used um, party drug <clears throat> or um, club drug, <laughs> but it's... Um, pretty much the same chemical components as ketamine. It's called S-ketamine, E-S-ketamine. Now, it's going by the name of Spravato, S-P-R-A-V-A-T-O. Now, in order to qualify for this specific treatment, you, you have to have tried two antidepressants, just two, and in order to qualify for this um, new treatment. Now, the treatment is an add-on medication. So say you found a antidepressant that somewhat works. Spravato or esketamine is supposed to help rebuild brain cells. Now, you can't get this prescribed to you. You have to go to a restrictive facility in order to get the treatment. Now, so that means you just can't walk out of a pharmacy with ketamine. It's a nasal spray. Now, it gets... <clears throat> you get the treatment at least once a week or once every other week. Now, the side effects include dizziness, nausea, vertigo, anxiety, lethargy, increased blood pressure, Vomiting, feeling drunk, and depersonalization, derealization. Hmm. So, those are the common side effects. Which is pretty scary. Now, in order to afford this, each session, depending on your dosage, costs between $590 and $885. And that's pretty crazy. Now, this is pretty alarming because ketamine has been known to be addictive. And you can have withdrawals from it. You can abuse it, which is why they're restricting use for it. But the long-term use has been known to lead to cognitive impairment as well as amnesia. So, what do we take from this? There's a lot of add-on medications. There was a drug called Symbiax in 2009 that was supposed to help people with treatment-resistant depression. They have a drug out called Rexalti, which is supposed to be an, also an add-on medication for people with treatment-resistant depression. And supposedly this pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company claims that 30 to 40% of people try two antidepressants and they both don't work, which is true. So that's definitely a easy way for them to get approval for ketamine through the FDA. I tried seven, eight, nine different antidepressants before I found out about a DNA test, before I found out which antidepressant would actually work best with my DNA, after trying every SSRI, multiple atypical, tricyclical SNRIs, I finally found one that worked. Why not just do the DNA test for everyone? Why... Is this even a thing? I mean, the drug I mentioned before, Symbiax, is an antipsychotic. Rexalti, antipsychotic. And ketamine is known to put you into what's called a psychotic state, meaning you're out of touch with reality. You're in depersonalization, derealization, which means you 
don't feel connected to yourself. You don't feel connected to the world around you. Everything around you doesn't feel real. And it's not fun. I've had that before with intense anxiety. And it just happens to be a side effect of this treatment. So, getting this out there to just give you guys a heads up. If you're in treatment-resistant depression, if you haven't had a DNA test done first, do it. Find a doctor who does it. You, you can find the company Genomind, G-E-N-O-M-I-N-D. It helped me out tremendously. It was uh, through insurance. It was like a $300 copay to find out what I, what I could actually use for my depression. Besides, and that's a hell of a lot better than a $590 to $885 hit every week or every other week. And I highly doubt this is covered by insurance yet. It's pretty crazy. Dizziness, nausea, vertigo, anxiety, lethargy, blood pressure, increased vomiting, feeling drunk, depersonalization, derealization. I'm just going to note that I've never taken ketamine before in my life. I've talked to people who have, and they say that they feel good. It um, gives you a good high, and you kind of feel like in bliss, like um, euphoria. And if you take way too much or you overdo it, which you can because it really um, affects your memory, you know, um, short-term memory. So people will forget when they took their last dose or the last hit or whatever you want to call it. And they go into something called a K-hole and they're like in a different world. And they just sit there and they look like a zombie. Like emotionless and just not good. So be weary of this. If uh, a doctor recommends Spravato, a new treatment. Because doctors definitely get kickbacks, unfortunately, for new medications. And even though it's a restricted treatment, it's expensive as hell. They don't really give you the tools to be able to abuse it, which is good. But the long-term side effects do not seem to be studied ever with antidepressants or any treatment for depression for that matter. So there's my two cents on Spravato, ketamine, and hopefully there's a different way to treat your treatment-resistant depression. I would suggest trying everything else before this. If you're watching this video, you made it this far and you're this desperate to give it a shot and you've tried every other outlet, go for it. Who am I to say don't do it? But don't say I didn't warn you. That's it for tonight, guys. Hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully everyone's doing well. Keep your heads up. Keep fighting, keep surviving.